How did it look? In today's video, we're going to talk about is ChatGPT slash OpenAI dead? Now, the reason I'm making this video is because recently I've been using these tools and I'm thinking, for me, ChatGPT is becoming more and more pointless, pretty much, right? For me as a personal user. So let's get into, is it dead? Well, first things first, DeepSeek has been released. Everyone knows about it on the channel. We have a video how to install it locally and run it. It's open sourced, so you can download it and use it. And it's actually only like 2 to 3% the cost of OpenAI, so, so much cheaper. It's not quite as good across the board, but it is better than OpenAI, as you can see, on a few things, specifically for reasoning. So this is your change of thought and reasoning as opposed to just tasks. So that's the one big competition right now, DeepSeek, but it's not better, it's just cheaper, really. Next, we have perplexity. This is what you would use for search. So, for instance, when you go to ChatGPT and you search something in, it doesn't look up real-time data, whereas perplexity searches on the web right now. Then if you're editing your code, I was using ChatGPT to edit, as you've seen from the video on the channel of how to develop a web app, your first ever web app using AI. Well, then I've started using Cursor now, and you can do all of the debugging and stuff inside the IDE, so there's no point in going to ChatGPT. Then next, we have browser use. So OpenAI released Operator, which is their computer using agent, so it can open Chrome and move around. It's $200, it's not in the UK yet, it's not gonna be in the EU for like six months or something, but you have a free version called browser use, which again, there's a video on the channel showing you how to install and use it. And then finally, if you're gonna build apps, you're as well using something like Replit, which is like your own automated web developer. It's specialized in building apps because when you go to ChatGPT, it can be a bit of a nightmare and it's back and forth. It's basically just using Cursor, but you have to keep going between browsers, which is a bit of a nuisance. And then additionally, we have Gemini, which if you want to use Google, you use Gemini. And if you want to have an open source model, generally you would use Meta's Olama models. So when you look at this, it looks pretty bleak for OpenAI, I must admit. Like, what is the point? Other than, you know, being your generic go-to kind of chatbot, what's the point? Well, it's kind of expanding on that chatbot idea. So really, they're positioning themselves with partnerships more than anything else. So, for instance, we'll have seen this picture. President Trump has signed a, a deal for five years, I think, for $500 billion dollars. In, open, in AI infrastructure, specifically Stargate, that's their, their main key one right now, that's exclusive for OpenAI. So basically build infrastructure so that OpenAI can create better models. They're also going for profit, so uh, keep an eye out for that. So big, big um, moves in the partnership space with the government. Then, <laughs> the government of enterprises, Microsoft, is obviously their main partner and they look to evolve their partnership. So with this partnership, they have a few key elements which we'll look at here. So Microsoft had rights to open AI's IP, so their intellectual property. It's closed source, it's not an open source model, and that's the benefit for Microsoft is that no one else has the model. So when they do reach super intelligence, if they do, then Microsoft have that. So they can patent it and then sell it to you, which is not good for you and me, but it's good for them. Um, it's also the API is exclusive to Azure. So on Azure's cloud, that's what runs OpenAI's API. So again, you know, big business. Microsoft and OpenAI have revenue sharing agreements as well. And Microsoft remains a major investor in OpenAI. So big investments with the government, with the government of enterprises. So really just partnerships. But I say only just partnerships as if that's not the main thing. But the strategic angle they're taking, so if we zoom out again and look at this, I was saying that, you know, it doesn't really meet any of these specialised needs, right? It's not cheap. It doesn't search the web particularly well. doesn't, you know, integrate with IDs particularly well. Browser use, not particularly well. Again, expensive, etc. And then doesn't build apps particularly well. That's just the use cases that I'm kind of aware of and use. Um... But that's because they are aiming, shifting, intel shifting attention to super intelligence, i.e. creating AI with greater than human capabilities. So the reason 
that we have all of these models is because these people are looking at specialized use cases and creating those maybe not deep seek but but the other kind of competitors on the market whereas your major competitors like your gemini and olama they're kind of trying to do a similar thing but do they have this same big uh partnerships maybe not although i suppose you could argue google and gemini but so there you go are they dead no but are they any good they're all right I would say look out on the market, see what else is out there to fit your needs. I think the biggest direction that OpenAI is heading is not being necessarily the innovators, but they will be the go-to for enterprise adoption of AI, which is where the money is. So take from that what you will. Anyway, I'm going to make a video next if people are interested on what are these, because I have no idea what these benchmarks are personally. So I think it'd be cool to actually find out what does it really mean. Anyway, let me know if you want to see that. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Bye.